Hello everybody, Eternal Flame here, and today we're hopping into another anime for today. Why? Because I feel like bringing Hunter x Hunter content back to the channel. And this is a video I really wanted to redo, mainly because old people on the channel would know this was a video that was in the past, which was the matchup between Killua and Hisoka. I find this to be a really interesting matchup, so I'm going to explain that one video after I go over the two scaling, the two's abilities, and how the two of them fight as combatants. Now up first, I do want to say the Hisoka that we're going to very specifically be talking about is the Hisoka before he fights Krolo. Basically, he's not going to get a post-mortem Nenamp, mainly because I think post-mortem Nenamp Hisoka is kind of really hard to scale and you can't really place him anywhere, but I think he would destroy Killua, and I just don't think that's a fair and fun fight. Finally, I'll also be taking the two characters in character, mainly because I truly believe that's the best way to do versus matches, mainly because it shows it's not just their own powers that make them lose, but also their own mistakes they make as characters, so I think that's something good to take into account when it comes to versus battles. However, because we're already on the topic of Hisoka, I'm going to talk about Hisoka and his scaling first, then we're going to move on to Killua and Killua's scaling. Now, Hisoka falls in a tier of characters that is a one-shot level higher than Chimera and Squadron leaders. At least when it comes to things like striking strength and durability, especially durability. This is mainly because of his scaling to Krolo. To explain Krolo scaling, I have to explain Silva Zoldic scaling, who Krolo should scale relative to, if not even stronger. Silva Zoldic, when arriving to the Chimera Ant Squadron Palance, was able to one-shot a Chimera Ant Squadron leader by landing on them with an attack. Meanwhile, Krolo was able to take several blows from both Zeno Zoldic, who should be even stronger than Silva Zoldic, as well as Silva Zoldic and Silva's full power compressed into Nen Energy Balls. This is also extremely impressive because of the fact that Krolo actively was not trying to kill Silva or Zeno. In order to scale this all back to Hisoka, Hisoka is able to take several of those blows from Krolo and is repeatedly shown to be physically stronger than Krolo as well, because it only takes a few of his blows to knock Krolo back in comparison to Krolo who needs to land flurries of blows that Hisoka is blocking repeatedly. It's also required for Krolo to have several new abilities added to his kit, as well as evolve his base ability just to be able to beat Hisoka in a perfect strategy. Now, I will say I am not as sure if Krolo did need to plan that much in order to face off against an opponent like Hisoka, but I do think Krolo respected Hisoka's power enough to plan out that much, which shows Hisoka was at least a threat to him, and Hisoka and Krolo should be on an even level, but I would put Hisoka above in terms of physicality. So basically, to summarize this entire scale, you have a Chimera Ant Squadron leader in Chitu being weaker by a one-shot tier than Silva. Then you have Silva who is equal to, if not weaker than Krolo, and then you have Hisoka who should be physically relative to, if not above this Krolo. So that's his attack potency and his durability. Now let's get into Hisoka's speed. Hisoka's speed is a lot easier to scale. You can literally just say Hisoka is as fast, if not faster than Phaeton, who Phaeton is able to keep up with squadron leaders, if not surpass them in speed by quite a bit as well. And considering Hisoka never saw Phaeton as something interesting or a threat, then Hisoka should be on that same level, if not even faster than Phaeton. You also could just argue that Krolo is the strongest member of the Phantom Troop because he's the leader, and by extension Hisoka should scale relative to Krolo, and bam, you get Hisoka as around the Chimera and Squadron leader in terms of speed. But speed and power is not what Hisoka is known for. No, what Hisoka is known for is his battle IQ and his ability of bungee gum, which possesses both the properties of rubber and gum. Hisoka is capable of transmuting his Nen to have the properties of both rubber and gum and using it in a variety of ways, and that is mainly what he's known for, taking a simple ability like bungee gum and using it in so many versatile ways that it becomes a nightmare to fight against. This is done for doing things like hiding the bungee gum, attaching it to people when they aren't expecting it, and adding in a bunch of distractions, especially with his playing cards, which is his playing cards that can be also amped up by his bungee gum and his Nen as well. Hisoka is a brilliant tactician, and his brilliant tactician allows him to make his simple ability into one that is extremely deadly, allowing him to overcome even opponents that have prepared for him quite a bit. Now, of course, he couldn't beat Krolo, but Krolo had to make a very specific strategy to counter Hisoka. Now, I'm not as sure if Krolo could beat Hisoka normally, but the fact that Krolo went out of his way to go that far with making an ability speaks a lot to how good of a combatant Hisoka actually is. Hisoka also has a massive amount of experience. After all, he enjoys fighting strong opponents and he goes out of his way to fight strong opponents, so he has fought quite a lot of people over his days. Now, will this be enough to triumph over Killua? Well, let's go over Killua's scaling and then we'll find out. Now, up first, before we get into Killua's scaling, I am going to say we're going to be doing two separate matches. The first match is going to be between Killua and Hisoka in base form, and the second match is going to be Killua in Godspeed versus Hisoka. You're going to very much understand why we're doing it in two separate ways. 
So up first in terms of attack potency and durability, Killua should scale a one-shot level higher than Chimera and Squadron Leaders, similar to Hisoka, although I would give Hisoka a bit more of an advantage in terms of strength in comparison to Killua. Killua's scaling is more so scaling relative to Gon, who Gon, via showing off Jajan Ken, was able to make Morel so terrified that he was sweating and he actually thought that he was about to die. Now, Killua does have other good attack potency feats as well. For example, he was able to take on an entire squadron of Chimera and soldiers that had their Nen unlocked and fight all of them at once with relative ease while they were all trying to jump him and the only reason they were able to escape was because they had a sniper assisting them that was amping their bullet up with their abilities. That sniper, of course, being a Kalgo. Kilo was able to do all of this while not showing off any of his abilities or attacks, mainly only using physical strength because he wanted the enemy to underestimate them, so he was holding back in what he could even use. It's even arguable if Killua was actually using Nen to enhance himself, but I'm not going to go that far and I'm not going to go that crazy with this. However, Killua wasn't using his abilities whatsoever. In terms of speed, Killua in his base form is pretty good. You can also put Killua in the same tier as Hisoka through the same arguments of they should scale relative to Chimera and Squadron Leaders in terms of speed because he can fight them and he can fight people who can fight them. Now remember this is only base Killua I am talking about right now, however I'm going to get into how strong is Killua not in his base form. Now there are a couple abilities that I think are going to be relevant in this matchup and those are the main ones I'm going to talk about. One such ability is Killua's ability to turn his hand into that of a knife. In other words, Killua is able to make his hands so sharp and claw-like, they are as sharp as several knives, which that is going to be very, very useful if Killua ever gets a chance to take out Kisoka's heart, because then Killua can go for taking out the heart. He doesn't have to just rely on blunt damage like Kisoka is going to have to rely on. Up next is the Rhythm Echo, where by Killua moving in a certain rhythm and movement, he is able to make it look like several Killuas have spawned. However, this one won't really be that useful against Hisoka, mainly because Hisoka can sense Nen. It's also shown that it's not that strong against actual smart opponents, and it's only really good against dumber opponents. Up next is the Thunder Palm ability, where Killua strikes someone and ends up sending lightning bolts into their body, shocking their body and stunning them for a little bit in order for him to land his next blow. Then his final ability that he has access to before we get into Godspeed territory is his ability to use Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is a much stronger version of the Lightning Palm ability where it is a literal bolt of lightning thrown down an opponent like a projectile in order to stun them. Killua also has access to customized yo-yos which weigh a total of 50 pounds each, which when they were using combat were able to completely tear through trees back in the Greed Island arc, let alone this much stronger Killua because Killua has gotten massively stronger since that point. However, when it comes to Hisoka fighting against Killua in Killua's base form, Hisoka wins at a pretty mid-diff difficulty in my opinion. The main reason for that is a couple of reasons. Number one, Hisoka full counters two of Killua's main abilities pretty badly with his technique, mainly because stunning Hisoka with just pure lightning is not going to work. And while the two of them do have relative stats, I do genuinely think Hisoka is much better of a tactician and that's going to end up winning him the day. Sure, yes, Killua has a lot of experience killing people, but he doesn't have that same level of battle experience, especially against other Nen users like Hisoka does. However, I will say Killua is going to definitely have some opportunities to win, mainly because of what Hisoka's personality is like and how much he actually enjoys fighting and enjoys challenges. So I can see some openings opening up as a result of that, but at the same time, I think more likely than not Hisoka is going to win this battle. But I don't see Killua dying here, mainly because Hisoka would definitely see there's still some potential in Killua. However, while base form Killua does lose to Hisoka, in my opinion, Godspeed Killua absolutely demolishes Hisoka, and I'm going to explain why. Now, Godspeed is not an amp to physical stats other than one stat in particular being speed. But the amp to speed that Godspeed gives is absolutely ridiculous. So first, let's talk about the showing of speed everybody knows Godspeed for, his battle against Yupi. Now, it should be noted, Yupi is as fast as base form Killua, if not even faster, which is already pretty good. Killua in Godspeed is able to move so fast that the narrator literally says Yupi does not have a chance to roar or transform. Killua is able to stun lock Yupi so badly through his physical blows and constant attacks that Yupi cannot do a single thing to counter. Like in Yupi's point of view, it looks like Killua is literally teleporting around. So that's already pretty impressive. Killua, while still figuring out the ability, is able to move that fast for the first time using Godspeed properly. He's also able to battle against Poof as well and keep Poof completely away from Kumogi, and this is the same person who can separate himself into hundreds of smaller versions of himself and they still can't get to Kumogi. 
Now, yes, this is not a full power proof, but it's still absolutely impressive. However, there's the most impressive feat of all of them for Killua, which is Killua's later on showing with Adult Gone. Where Killua is able to reach Adult Gone around the same time, that post-mortem amped Neferopito ends up cutting off Gon's arm. I want y'all to remember, normal Nephropito is on a completely different level than Zeno Zoldic, let alone a post-mortem then amped Nephropito. So I think you guys can kind of see why I think Killua absolutely destroys Hisoka. Now, yes, I will say speed does not mean everything in a match. If Killua couldn't damage Hisoka at all, I would not give the win to him. I'd say Killua would eventually run out of stamina, especially because this form does have low stamina. However, there is something else that's quite important too, which is the fact that Killua is capable of damaging Hisoka already. So effectively, this battle ends up becoming two people with relative stats, however, one of them is able to blitz the other so badly it's going to look like they are teleporting in their perspective. After all, someone who should be of similar speed to Hisoka, if not even faster, did not have a moment to roar or transform against this power kill who had access to. Now yes, there are things that Hisoka could do to counter. There are genuine ways Hisoka could fight around this. For example, surrounding his body in bungee gum to attach Killua to himself. However, it should be noted two things. Number one, in Godspeed, Killua's body automatically reacts. And number two, I don't think Hisoka is going to find out or figure that out until it's too late. Especially considering all Killua needs to do in Godspeed is change his hands to be claw-like and impale Hisoka, because unlike a powerful opponent like Yupi, who is way too durable for that, Hisoka is not too durable for that. And even if that doesn't work, he can try that again, and I genuinely do think Killua can finish off Hisoka before Hisoka can come up with a counter strategy, mainly because of how fast Killua actually is, and every single one of Killua's blows are going to be doing damage to Hisoka. Now, there are three main counter arguments that I really want to counter. The first main counter argument that I know some people are going to say is Hisoka's experience should give him the win. And while I do think experience is valuable, I think experience can only take you so far, especially considering your opponent is someone who can damage you and move faster than you can perceive and basically be teleporting in your POV. Like, don't get me wrong, if Killua were to play around with Hisoka, I genuinely think Hisoka would win, but that is not in character for Killua. Killua is someone who usually immediately goes for the kill unless he actually wants someone to be alive, and there is no reason he would want Hisoka to be alive, so I don't see Hisoka getting the chance to actually come up with a plan. I do think Hisoka could come up with one if he had enough time, but I don't think he would have that luxury of having enough time. Now, the next counter argument that I can think of is the fact that Hisoka doesn't seem that interested in fighting Killua yet, and I actually do have two counter arguments to that argument. The first argument is Hisoka doesn't really know how Killua uses Godspeed in combat. He has seen Killua use Godspeed to run away, but he has not seen Killua use it to fight somebody. Furthermore, this is also a nerfed and weakened version of Godspeed, mainly because Killua had disabled one of the functions which actually allowed him to think when he was running away, which for people who do not know, there are effectively two versions of Godspeed, one where he can think and one where his movements are automatic. The one where his movements are automatic is massively faster in comparison to the one where he actually has to think because of the fact that he has to delay himself by sending commands from the brain rather than it just being automatic. So all you would know is Killua has this ability that allows him to run away, and based on everything else he's seen, like I say in this video, Killua versus base form Hisoka goes in the favor of Hisoka. There's also the argument of just because he's more interested in Illumi doesn't mean he's not interested in Killua. However, I think that's a lot less valid in comparison to my previous argument of him having no idea what Godspeed is like in combat. And then there's the final argument, which in my opinion has the most legs to stand on, but I still don't think it's true. Which this entire argument is the narrative itself is trying to portray Killua as below Illumi because he's still terrified of Illumi, and we know Illumi and Isoka should be relative in terms of power. However, even this, I do have a couple counter arguments too. Number one, Killua isn't really too afraid of fighting Illumi, it's just he is in a massive rush to save Gon. So fighting Illumi would not save him time, it would take more time, and that could end up potentially with Gon dying in the end. My second counter argument is, even if Killua is afraid of fighting Illumi, that doesn't exactly mean Killua is weaker than Illumi, it could very well be that Killua still has PTSD of Illumi. This is the same man who trained him after all. So it could be very possible that Killua is just afraid of Illumi and doesn't want to fight him, or it could be downplaying himself. But I think the first argument is a bit more valid, which is just Killua doesn't have the time to fight Illumi so he doesn't really care, and is instead just trying to run away rather than fighting Illumi directly. There's also my third argument of he also knows if he were to fight Illumi, it more than likely wouldn't be just Illumi he's fighting against, and there would be the big possibility that Illumi would have help as well. 
So I don't think that's a valid argument in order to put Hisoka above Killua via using Illumi and Killua being afraid to fight Illumi. There's also the other issue of the feats itself kind of contradict this heavily as well, even if this was the case. Which the narrative that I've provided is supported by the feats as well, that Killua isn't actually weaker than Illumi, it's just he doesn't have the time to fight against Illumi, or he's just actually terrified of Illumi rather than it being a power thing. However, yeah, that's the video. I think Hisoka beats Killua in base form, but I think Killua in Godspeed beats Hisoka. And this is going to be the first of many Hunter x Hunter videos that are coming to the channel. I hope you all enjoy and have a good day. I'm a peace out. See y'all later.